Okay, we're going to do an orthogonal projection. An orthogonal projection is a form of engineering drawing where you look at all faces of an object in order to get a real view of what that object's like because most likely you want to make it. This could be like a packing block. You see it's got a sloping face over here. So the first thing that we do, we start with a front view. And you position the front view somewhere so you're going to leave yourself enough room for a top view. So I'm going to make this here to be the front. That'll be the top view over here. And then we're going to look at it from the right hand side, which is from this direction. So we'll see that. Right, so let's start with it. So we know we draw most shapes as squares or rectangles, triangles. So I'm just sort of marking out how big this object is here. So I've got a sort of a square shape like this. And what I'm doing now is just creating projection lines. So they don't have to be absolutely accurate, but I'm hand sketching. So my object's going to fit inside that prism there. Now I know roughly that it's going to be around about here for my sloping surface and there. So I've got a shape and I'm going to cut out a triangle out of that shape. So remember I told you everything's basically circles or triangles or squares. Now I'm going to go over the outline a little bit more just so that you can see it more clearly. And generally speaking, your outlines will always be thicker than your projection lines. I'm doing them in this thick pen so you can see it clearly. So this is going to be called the front view and we'll always normally label it as front. That's the front view. Now, in third angle projection, when you look at an object, you look at the front first. The next thing you do is look at the top. And the top view sits on top, as you'd expect. Place it a little distance away. So I'm going to start at, say, about here. I'll draw my projection line across. I've got a width that's about to there. And now on the basis of that, I can block in my rectangle. And I notice that these lines have to line up. And whenever you're doing a, a projection like this, the lines have to line up. So your top view must be in line with your projection of your bottom view. So by projection, I mean if you carry the lines forward, they have to all be alignment. That helps your eye train your eye to know that this is going to be the same edge. So that edge there corresponds, which is this edge here, corresponds to that edge, which we can just see the tip of it here flowing down that way. Okay, so that will be the top view. Now, the right-hand side view is always from the right-hand side from the front. So there's my object, right-hand side view, and we're going to look at it from this way. Now, of course, I've got to extend these projection lines, and I've got to look at the object, and I'm going to position it so it's not too close, because I'll show you why in a minute. We need to leave a little bit of distance, and I'll mark out my sizes here, and I could do this by measuring with a ruler. Remember, I'm telling you, as you're drawing lines, make sure they're nice straight lines, no furry beasts. And we've got a little issue here, because it's a making drawing. There's another edge that I can see. I can't really see it. It's here. But from this distance, when I'm looking down here, all I can see is this top surface. But in the reality, there is another hidden edge behind that. So what do I do with that? Well, I'm going to do a little transfer of a projection line across, and I'm going to indicate that hidden edge to show that it's on the opposite face from my viewing face with dotted lines. See the dotted lines? So the dotted lines are like Superman's X-ray vision. You can see through objects and you can see what's behind them. Now, if I gave this object with a few dimensions, so let's suppose I'll draw the dimension to leader lines. You just start just a little bit um, to the outside of your drawing, draw another line across, two small arrowheads, and you give a dimension. And I'm guessing that'll be 20 millimeters. Put the, put the dimension printed on top of your dimensioning line. Now, I'll do another line. I'll just give it, say, a... Um, I could let's indicate uh, an angle here, or better still, I'll go up here, I'll do some leader lines here, do my dimensioning line across like that, and then I'll say that surface there will be, and I'm only guessing here now, I'll say 40 millimetres. Now I don't have to write millimetres, it's presumed that I understand it's millimetres. So it's a mixing across over here, I might indicate an angle, Let's just extend that over here, and I can indicate that angle, and I'll say that angle there is 30 degrees. 
So you see my leader lines on the angle don't actually touch, they just stop a little bit short and they extend lightly like that. And I can do a height down here and say that height there will be 50 millimeters. And we change the direction of the printing to match up so that when you look at the drawing, you can look at it from either this direction to see all the vertical dimensions or you put it like that to see all the horizontal dimensions. It's all designed to be ease of looking. Now, if I wanted to make a, say, a smaller dimension in here, I can make it across into there. And I'll say that dimension over there would be 10 millimeters. Now that starts to define what the object looks like. I know that angle, I know that dimension over here, I know exactly where this is going to touch. So that would be enough information to be able to, well, perhaps I might need this dimension here. And I'll say that that will be 35 millimeters. And that's enough for someone to make that exactly as it is. So it's a making drawing, front, top, and We'll label this as right-hand side. And we would use the symbol for third angle projection, which will be this little symbol here. It's a cone. And that's what it looks like for third angle projection. Okay. That's how you do an orthogonal third angle projection. Now, your job will be going to be to take another object. Let's say we take um, something like this object over here, which we've done before and create a third angle projection drawing of your object. Now you can choose where the front view is. You could make this the front view if you wanted, or you can make that the front view. Whatever view you make it, if that's the front view, then the top view is going to what it, then the top view will be looking at it from on top, which means it'll look like that on top. And the right hand side view, if you're looking at this as a front view, the right hand side view looking from this side, it's just going to look line up with the front view and it'll be like that. So you decide which way you want to, and that's a beautiful thing. You can choose how you want to project, and you can choose what face you want to make as your front view. But remember, you've got to go straight above for the top, and the lines have to line up. You've got to go straight across to the right for the right-hand side view. You can do bottom views if you want, like that. That's what it looks like from the bottom. If we had the that was the front view, the bottom would be looking from under here, and that's what it would look like. And that's very useful for us to be able to create all sorts of objects. Okay, thank you for watching that. Introduction to Orthogonal Projection.